I am back, coming back to you from my basement. And I got many mouths with me today just saying, what's up? But I do pray that this finds you well as you find yourself in the middle of Holy Week. And as I've been just really thinking and reflecting on Holy Week and really how different uh, it feels, especially as we still are preparing for the biggest weekend, one of the biggest weekends uh, for Christians worldwide and Though it's different, I'm, I, my heart actually is appreciative of kind of the season that we find ourselves in because what it allowing for me is really to, to, to get back to simplicity that, man, you're like me, man, when you came to this faith, it was just the simplicity of knowing and loving Jesus and being known by him and the joy and the peace and the freedom that brings and having our sins fully forgiven once and for all. And, uh, and I'm just man, grateful that in the midst of it, uh, in the simple the simplicity of being in the basement, I'm just reminded that that's all that my soul needs, isn't it? Right? Like at the end of the day, uh, what we need is those kind of precious morsels of encouragement of the gospel, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, and even uh, beyond being in this holy week, we're also in another season, right? Uh, if you've watched any level of news nationally or even locally, what has been uh, put before us is that uh, this week kind of kicks off uh, two very difficult weeks. They're saying two. Um, I don't know what that means, what it'll look like, could be longer. I don't know. But what I do know is what, what they're saying is uh, we need to prepare ourselves for uh, for the challenges that that will present it, be presented in these next couple of weeks. And the fact that both are happening at the same time, Holy Week and Easter and COVID-19, the, the intensity of it. What, how, did, how then do we, do we walk these next weeks out, really even in this Holy Week? And I, and I really do believe that um, all the beauty of Holy Week, it provides all that we need to walk out this season that is uh, before us. And so I thought about some some things for us to really think through and and ways to posture ourselves in this season. So I got uh, got some four four Ps. Pause, pray, pursue, and peace. First, pause. Uh, see, as we walk in this season, I think what we most need to do is to pause to reflect, to reflect on who God is and the precious gospel that we have, to actually make space. If you're like me, because our worlds collided and there's really no boundaries, then everything just was thrown into a pond and there's really no clear space of, okay, when, when am I spending just time reflecting on the Lord reflecting on how I'm doing, and it all blends together. And I think um, if we're not careful, that can rob us of really sitting in and really enjoying the spiritual nutrients the gospel provides for us in this season, I think. And so I, I want to put before us that the importance of really pausing. If you have not made space to really ask questions, like how, how are you doing? Um, what is the Lord teaching you? What are the, the things the Lord is kind of bubbling up to the surface in this season? We must have moments of stillness, of um, moving the noise and the chaos out. And again, for some of us, that's an hour. For some of us, that's five minutes. And I don't know what it looks like for you or when. It might be early in the morning. It might be during mid-afternoon naps. It might be late in the evening, whenever. I think it's important that we are intentional with pausing especially this week, right? And not just sprinting by and not allowing other not allowing other voices to be the prominent voices that we're listening to, but that we are pausing and seeking to hear God. So that brings up the second one, to pray. First pause and pray. Uh, pray simply talking to God. It is bringing our full selves to God. It's more than simply throwing up a Lord help, right, in the, in the midst of a stressful moment. Uh, we know that he is gracious and he will help, but 
Uh, but we really do need times of just sitting and talking with God, uh, whether it's crying out to him like Jesus did in the garden. And you are not liking the season that he has led you in. And uh, for some of us, you just need to tell him those words. Uh, but it's also talking to him and finishing up like Jesus did. Like, Lord, I wish this wasn't the way, but your will be done. And I I submit to you in your wisdom, and I joyfully do that. Even if I don't fully understand, it's praying and having those conversations to him. It's praising him. It's making sure that we lean into the, the abounding in thanksgiving, right? Uh, that we are reminding ourselves the good things that he's doing and providing for us in this season. And let's make sure that we are leaving time to do that. It's praying for others especially those that don't know Jesus. This is still a week where we, man, we what, what Easter provides is what the world most needs, a conquering Savior, a God who forgives and, and removes the, the, the sinful barriers that stand between him and us. Let's pray that people see that. We started this year saying, let's pick one person that we we're going to pray from January to Easter. Well, let's Make sure we're still praying for that person. And let's ask God to, to, whether it's this week or in this season, that he would open up eyes, that he would say that as people are more aware how fragile their life is, they become increasingly aware of the need for a Savior, need for someone who's writing a bigger story for them. So pause, pray, and then pursue. In the book of Psalms, uh, seasons of suffering are often marked with seasons of seeking. Right? In Psalm 27, 8 says, You have said, seek my face. And my heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. Is that what your heart's saying? That, like, Lord, I want you. I am pursuing you. I want everything that you are and that you seek for me to learn in this season. Let us not give ourselves an exemption. Oftentimes in seasons of suffering, we think because we're suffering, we need not seek because we're just simply trying to survive. But as a Christian, man, suffering is not simply survival. Uh, it's, it's to seek after him and to see how he's revealing himself in this specific season, not just generally, but specifically. So man, are you pursuing him? Man, make time to pursue him in his word. I've been listening to this new app, Dwell app, where they have diff these different voices, uh, reading scripture, beautiful. I'm listening to, to Felix from Africa, all right? Just enjoy reading and pursuing him in word and music. My, my family has this song, The Blessing on Repeat. My sons love the song and its video. And, and man, it's just honestly nourishing our souls, reminding us of the grace of the gospel, the goodness of the Lord. Are you pursuing? Make sure you are spending time pursuing God and others. Pursue others through serving them. Serve them by praying. Serve them by providing what is money or resources. Uh, pursue others uh, by pointing them to the gospel. Maybe uh, what you would do this week in pursuing others is just shoot a short video of your testimony and what the gospel means to you and share that or share scripture and how that scripture is impactful to your heart and your life and your family. Share that but let's pursue and then lastly peace i know it's not a verb but peace is what we all need and really peace is what the facts of holy would provide for us see what holy week shows us is that god does not avoid pain and suffering and that god actively works in the midst of suffering and this should give us give us peace like this this season what we say is this season is not a wasted season that he's actively working in your frustration, in your angst, in your fears. He is actively working in social distancing. He is actively working. And this is what the gospel shows us. And it shows us that suffering or any season that you find yourself in, it never gets the last word ever. Like this week ends with an exclamation point that Jesus gets up from the grave. And I don't want to pre-preach my Easter message, but let's just be reminded that this is what the gospel 
offers to us and and it gives us it's a confidence that we have see we don't know what this next week holds we can watch the news and be overwhelmed by what could happen we don't know i don't know what the next week holds but that's actually okay cuz here's what i do know that i know what this that what christ holds in this next week i know that Christ defines this next week. I know that COVID-19 or the coronavirus does not speak the, 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 the declaration of my life that supersedes Christ. That Easter and Good Friday has already announced over me who I am and what this week is about. So even on my worst day, even when I don't know, I'm good. Like in Christ, God can protect me even from sickness in Christ. God can keep me. Let's say I do get sick from this or something else. God can keep me. And in Christ, God has conquered the grave. So let's say, let's play out the worst case scenario. That in this sickness or any other sickness that ends in death. For the Christian, that is not what we most fear. Because even in death, God has already conquered the grave. We are and will be with him. So this Holy Week, as we sit and ponder, as we pause and pursue, and as we really sit and allow the gospel to stir our hearts towards the peace that it provides, let's not let this season of COVID-19 or the fear of the unknown be, be honestly the, the defining factor of this week. Let's allow the gospel to remain the defining factor of the Christian's week. Let's enter into this weekend with confidence and joy in Jesus. I can't wait to be with you this Easter weekend. Though it will look different, here's what's not different. The gospel, the unchanging gospel of Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you, and I love you.